Hi, this is part two of the turret tutorial. In the last part, we set up the tracking system so that our turret could aim at the red cube. Now, what we're going to do today is the shooting system, but first we need to set up the projectiles, so we'll do that stuff. So, we're going to create four scripts for this. First, we'll make a base projectile script. This is what all the others will inherit from. Then we will have some normal projectile. So this one will travel in a straight line from where it's first shot. Uh, we'll have a tracking projectile. This one will follow the target, so it'll sort of go to it. And finally, we will have a beam projectile. So this one will be sort of a straight line from the turret just aiming in the direction that it's currently aiming in. So, these are the four scripts that we're going to start off doing, then we'll move on to the shooting system. Alright, so to start with, we will work on the base projectile script. So, you want to just open that one up. Then, what we're going to do is, we will make this a public abstract class. This means that it can't be put into the scene but it can be inherited from, and that can be put into the scene. The idea is we're going to base everything off of this projectile, override a function, and then just call that function from our uh, shooting system, and then each projectile can sort of define how it is fired. So, if you don't understand sort of what I mean by that, you'll see it in a minute. So, what we'll do is we will add a public float and call it speed. Uh, we'll set this to 5 because why it's semi fast for a bullet. And then we will make a public abstract void function. Call it fire projectile. And we'll have a game object that will be the one where it sort of got fired from. A game object that's the target that it's travelling to and a damage of the damage it's going to do on arrival. So this is just our sort of this is the base class, and everything's going to inherit from this. So that one's done now, and we will go to the normal projectile. That is the easiest one to sort of show what I mean. For the normal projectile, first thing we got to do is inherit from our base projectile class. So that's nice and easy. We will be doing the start function for this one. Now we'll need two variables. One will be a vector three called a underscore direction. This will be the direction that the bullets go traveling. Then the other one will be called m underscore fired. So this is just if it's been fired, then we'll travel in the direction. So if m underscore fired, then we will do transform position plus equals. Uh, what is this now? It's m underscore direction times by speed times time dot delta time. Now the reason why I times everything by times at dial time is to make it frame independent. That way if someone's got like 10 frames and someone else has 60, that projectile still move at the same rate for both of them. So time stuff by time delta time is very helpful in that situation. Anyway, so now if something gets fired, it can travel along the direction provided with the speed provided from the, like, we're using the speed variable that we got from the inherited class. So now we'll overload the, um, well, override the other function that we just wrote. So it actually needs to be public. So you'll need to do public override void. Then what we'll do is we'll copy it. So we'll grab this. Fire projectile. There we go. Alright. So now all we have to do is we'll do if right, yeah. If launcher and then target. Then the M1 discard direction will be the target. Oops, target target dot transform dot position minus the launcher dot transform dot position 
Now, if we put this in brackets, Unity will treat this as the result of that sort of equation. So because of the effects freeze, the result will be effects free. So now, if I click a dot, it'll give me the functions for effects free. So now I can do this and get the normalized version of that vector, which is essentially in the form of one. Like you can look at Unity's documentation normalized to get a better idea of what that does. But essentially this will make it so the speed that we provide is always consistent, no matter which way the projectile is sort of going, or how far off the launcher was from the target or anything like that. So this will make sure that it travels in the right direction. Well, at the right speed in the right direction, yeah. So, draw direction is that, and then let's go fired equals true in this scenario. Now we'll ignore damage for now, we'll sort out later when we get around to putting in damage. We're just keeping the variable around now to make sure we don't have to rewrite a bunch of functions later. So, yeah, that'll work for the normal projectile. So what we'll do is we'll copy this code and go over to the tracking projectile. I'll just paste this in and make sure it's hit from base projectile again. Now this time around what we need is a game object and we'll call this the target. And this will be our underscore target instead. Then what we'll do in here is a vector. Oh, I don't need that. Actually, yes, we're doing that. It's my bad. It'll be better. Yeah. Let's get equal vector three dot move towards. So current position to targets position at speed times time dot delta time. So now it will move at that speed towards that location. So as that updates, this will just keep sort of moving along with it. Now, what we need here now is we don't actually care about the launcher, so we don't really need to check for that. Uh, we can just do M plus sort of target equals target. Nice and simple for that one. So now that bullet can follow the target. So now we'll do the beam one. So let's open the beam projectile. So for the beam one, what we'll do first is paste in the code we just copied, inherit from base projectile. Then this time around we're going to need the launcher because we can use the launcher for the point of the start of the beam and then if we get forward vector we can use that to sort of say where the beam's going to sort of draw between. So down here we'll do we've got launcher and let's go launcher equals launcher. And then transform okay. So don't need oh this is the let's go launcher. Alright, so for this bit what we're going to do for the beam is we're going to use the line renderer. So we can just use get component line renderer. Then we are going to want to do set position. And this first one is the origin point of the beam. Then the second one is going to be the end of the beam. Now, say you wanted this to like bounce off walls and things, then the line renderer does actually let you set more positions. But by default it uses two and it's a bit more of a complex thing to sort of do the beam bouncy stuff. So I'll make up of that in the latest tutorial, but for now we'll keep it simple of just having a start and end to the beam. So the transform so the position for this one will be the launcher position. Launcher that transform up position. So that's position one. And then position two is going to be line renderer that set position. One, then it's going to be M underscore launcher transfer on opposition. But what we're going to add on is the. Oops, that will complete for me. M underscore launcher dot transfer on dot forwards multiplied by. Right, we're going to need a float up here. Public float, public beam length. And we'll call it 10 by default. So then we'll do this times beam length. Let's 
So now that should, what well, that'll do is it'll draw from the start point to the end point and missed out a bracket. Yeah, so this will draw from the start point to the end point then pretty much say your camera's a lot further out and you need your beam to be longer. Just need to increase the beam length to make sure it's off screen so they can't really see where it ends because you don't want, but if you make it fade out at the end actually it may find this sort of being shorter beam but I don't mind just to look like it look infinite. So that'll do for that. So yeah, that's the beam project I've done. Right, uh I'm gonna break this into two videos. So this is all the projectile stuff done. And part two should be up there. Yeah. Part two should be available now anyway. So yeah. That's the projectile stuff and the next video will contain all the shooting stuff. Thanks for watching.